Okay, so let's start us with a little bit of a correction. No, Conads are not the most important zombie in PvZ. Those are the basics. However, saying that is like saying a pea shooter is the most important plant. They technically are, but that's a given. Everything is designed around it by default, to the point that the plant itself isn't actually too relevant. I consider Conad similar. When I say Conad defines strategy, basic zombies themselves aren't too relevant, and in this case, this is actually because of Conad that a lot of the game plays the way it does. This will be explained with time. Conads are, in general, a fantastic example of something I am going to call damage thresholds. Keep this in mind, as it'll be something that you'll be hearing for the next... however long this video is. It's a fairly simple premise, but one that can be applied to many games and balancing. But, well, first I need to talk about an incredibly dumb idea that makes a great clickbaity thumbnail. Alternative titles include Conad OP, with free ones, and Conad Ruined PVZ? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Anyways, I should probably just get it going. What on earth is Conad? Conad is a tankier basic zombie. Conad's importance comes from two important facts about Conad. One, it has three times the HP of a basic, and two, it costs two times as much points as a basic to spawn. To explain, internally plan those zombies 1 and 2 have a point system for each zombie spawn. To simplify, a basic costs 1 point, and a Conad costs 2. A Bugged Head costs 4 in PvZ2 and PvZ1, I believe, and so forth. These aren't super strict, but when a game spawns zombies naturally, this is very important. It is also important to note that the game is, broadly, three times more likely to spawn up the Conad than a basic. I could explain the internal systems of weight, but that's not something I want to do, so instead just take my word for it. Now, this is really important for the early game. The first few ways are the most important plan versus zombies, and being able to take full control during them is the most important part of the game. And this, well, this is mostly due to Conad. You see, Conad zombies are unique in that they offer a lot more health than their point cost would normally provide. Conads are tanky that do basics, remember, and much more likely to spawn. And this HP is just high enough that a pea shooter can't safely deal with one alone. It could kill one in the entire lawn, sure, but it comes down to movement speed RNG, and you can't put sunflowers down properly as a result. This is actually the main reason that in Plamo Zombies 2 and its mods, Pea Shooter is considered very weak. Again, Conads show up very often. It is not uncommon for levels to start off of Conads straight up, and you'll rarely find levels which don't have Conads. And when it's not a Conad, it's usually going to be a Buckethead, or a Fossil Head, or something else that can't be dealt with well by Pea Shooters. It's the main reason most people instead run instas, such as a Potato Mine and Chili Bean. The zombies are just too tanky for early game to go great otherwise, and you can use late game damages to break the armored zombies apart. It doesn't help that most specials have about the same HP as Conas do, at least in Plan Zombies 2. Barring near Mist Tape 2, most worlds will have relatively tanky specials. This is definitely most noticeable in worlds like Frostbite Caves and Big Wave Beach, where most specials have, at minimum, 2 times basic zombie HP. It almost entirely kills off Pea Shooter, and I blame Conad for making it the norm. This is less than intense, rigorous analysis of zombie HP, more so a random note I made. Conad just defined the amount of points HP is actually worth, so a lot of specials end up being tankier due to his presence. Due to all this, it is fairly common that the baseline for damage dealers in most mods is based around Repeater, not Pea Shooter. As in, Repeater is a baseline for all plant balancing, in the same way Conad is the baseline for all zombie balancing. The most notable, and perhaps infamous, example of this is in Ecclese, where Repeater is the core of everything, and the entire game is balanced around it and its presence. This is also why in Ecclese plans tend to cost it a lot more, if people don't realise. The game balances plans and their damage around Repeater, which costs 200 sun for 2 times B damage, and keeps merging cost in mind. Though, that's a story for a different day. However, this leads into something weird. You see, Repeater is insanely powerful in most mods of PZ2. Now, Parvis is a sat spread, so to speak. It's dedicated to simple damage, and so has a really reliable amount of damage that not much can stop, but another part of this is the fact that it hits several damage thresholds, and hits them hard. 
Remember when I said that Conehead embodies the idea of damage thresholds? Well, I should probably elaborate on what that actually means. Damage thresholds are a fairly simple topic to understand, and that I just named weirdly. What I consider this as is a concept that there are certain points in damage where excess damage starts being negligible. Not quite overkill, but it's more so the concept that increasing damage is less valuable than hitting key milestones, and that certain values will increase or decrease the value overall by a lot. It might be easier to explain with a very extreme example than work back. So, let's look at Citron. Citron does 800 damage a shot. A mighty amount of damage indeed. Unfortunately, Citron is fairly weak overall, so let's increase the damage. Let's say we wanted to do 1000 damage. A huge increase of 1.25 times, sure, but well, now let's see what interactions it actually changes. Well, surely you can kill Bucketheads better, right? Nope, it still calls them in two hits. It would be better with support to deal with the remaining HP, but this is a thought exercise with only Citron. And even then, that's more minor than you think. Barrows are the same. They take the same amount of hits to break either way. Brickheads and other similar variants act the same too. How odd. Well, it does unpack a gantuous, taking 4 hits to kill now instead of 6. And Blockheads, Knights, and those kind of zombies too, go from 3 hits to 2. It means it takes 1 less hit to kill Robocone. None of the other mechs, just Robocone. It can also 1 hit kill Zombie Kings, as those have 1000 HP exactly. To really cover my bases, Rock Puncher will be killed in 3 hits by the buff Citron, and 4 from the pre buff Citron, but is left on 70 HP. Octos and Fisherman 2 go from 2 to 1 hits, then Balloon and Piano are similar. This is the full list of non boss and non event zombies, but have a change in interaction, and it's not really all too many, is it? Uh, sure, it sounds like a lot, but the list, ignoring duplicate zombies such as Basics and Cones, it's 66 zombies or so. This change only impacts 7 zombies in the entire game under this criteria. It's almost 10%, for a 25% buff of damage. And these zombies are not common enough in ways to mean this damage will impact more than, at a really high estimate, 2% of shots. Especially when you consider several worlds have not. This also really doesn't change many one on one interactions. Zombies that can kill Citron still can and zombies that can't, or you draw Citron to counter, are still the same. In this case, Citron already hit all relevant targets, so its buff should be elsewhere. Now, when thinking about damage thresholds, think about this, but on a bigger scale. Instead of killing something in a single shot, think about that shot as the entire plant and how much damage it overall does. And instead of one-shotting a zombie, consider just being able to kill it in a reasonable time. This is what I mean by a damage threshold, and it's the ability of a plant to deal with a certain zombie or zombie group. And a main important damage threshold for early game? Well, it's our old friend Conan here. You can see this in action with mods which feature a plant equivalent to a 1.5x pea shooter. These plants tend to be insanely powerful, and some of the best plants for early game, as they are the cheapest plants that can reliably deal with Conan's, and outclass pea shooters at basically everything. As for a little more cost, they can deal with a lot much more reliably. Pea shooters don't have a damage to hit any super important thresholds. They can only kill basics reliably, and so they aren't particularly strong. This concept, admittedly, is less important as you approach late game in PvZ and PvZ2. At that point, you should be spamming down several heavy attackers, and the game can't really do a whole lot to stop you. Several zombies start stacking up and so forth. But again, the early game is the most difficult part of PvZ levels, so it's not as important. Like, especially in PvZ2, the game basically doesn't have a late game. It's an early game, then plays a bunch of instances a win. That's just how PvZ tends to work. Regardless, in PvZ2, Conehead is THE threshold to reach. If an early game plant can't kill a Conehead, it's not going to be able to deal with most things. Again, Conehead costs 2 points. It shows up in the vast majority of levels, appearing in most likely about 80% to 90% of all levels. If your early game plan dies to Conehead's, I'm sorry, but you've probably already lost. Even without, Conehead's are the main zombie the game is balanced around. Most zombies are going to have a HP value between Basics and Conehead's, and some enemies which have more HP than Conehead's, but less than later threat are the bucket. As a result, hitting this threshold for damage means you can take on a lot of these other early game threats for free, really. Now, with all that said, there is a zombie that should seem more important to you around about now. If Conehead is so important, well, then how come Buckethead isn't? 
Well, you might be able to guess already, but let's dedicate some more time for it. How come Conheads are so important to the game, but Bucketheads aren't? Bucketheads are fairly unique when compared to Conheads. This is mostly because they have just over twice the HP of a Conehead, so 6.5 times the HP of a basic if you're taking notes. This should have the same effect as Conehead, but I don't think it does. Firstly, Bucketheads cost 4 points, at least in PZ2, and I'm pretty sure it is in PZ1. Either way, it won't have as much impact, mostly because they don't really show up. Let's go into what they can do. Why did I think this bit was funny? Anyways, Bucketheads are a lot easier to remove because they don't really have a damage threshold in most cases. Very few single plants can actually kill a Buckethead, and even those plants that can, tend to not feel reliable at doing so, with the express exception of poison plants like Shadow Shroom. Though, maybe not Shadow Shroom. Actually, yes yeah, Shadow Shroom, because that's what Bucketheads are really dealt with by. Instant plants such as Shadow Shroom, Chili Bean, and Potato Mine. However, in most cases, you would be using instants against Conheads anyways, so Bucketheads don't really change that. In reality, your approach is mostly the same, especially if you've got Gantuas in the level. The only time this isn't really the case is when it's basics, bucket heads, and a lot of other lighter enemies. Except not all, because in this scenario, you instead would be using instants to kill bucket heads and run some form of AoE for everything else. That's not even really that hard to think about. It's a very standard look at how to use these plants, and it's something you might even do absentmindedly, as generally. AoE plants do be broken. In this way, bucket heads are really only a question, and the answer is explosives. They aren't unkillable without them, but you often either kill them passively, or use your recharging engines on them, and often they will have the most HP, and so just killing them that way is optimal. They're honestly shockingly similar to zombies like Jethro in that regard, requiring certain plants to be used, but instead of forcing AoE plants, it forces the player to use instant plants they would already use. Now this sounds like I'm hitting on Buggethead, but quite frankly, that would be dumb. There's more so me saying that Buggetheads aren't super impactful in the same way Conas are. Buggetheads aren't super dangerous, aren't super important, and are also just generally less common. A level can feel empty without Conas or basics, but a level without buckets is somewhat common, and what he tries to add is something that people already do just kinda doesn't work. I guess if instances didn't exist, Buggetheads could have been more interesting. If you had to place down walls instead, Buggets are a much more notable threat that really encourages you to plants you otherwise wouldn't. The threat they would pose is still very different to Conehead, instead making zombies behind them way more dangerous. This isn't really relevant much considering, well, it's not a thing, but it's more of a hypothetical that is fairly interesting. Or at least, I hope. You've literally watched this video thus far, you're probably at least vaguely interested in this. Unless you hate watching. Honestly, shout out to the people who have enough spite to watch someone they don't enjoy watching. This isn't me being patronizing, I am just seriously impressed some people have that much willpower. Anyways, I uh, think I'm done talking about this? It's hard to say. I could honestly go on and talk about some other random crap instead. Damage thresholds apply to a lot of other games too, after all. It's inherently the concept of when more damage isn't really important, and often when you're through balance change logs, you can find some interest in seeing why some changes were made. It's quite nice, at least for me. As I just said, damage thresholds and the like are fairly common to keep in mind when balancing enemies and units, and you can consider it overkill too if you really want. Either way, I think Conehead is the perfect example. He totally redefines the game he's in. Changes the meta of what plants are you remotely good, nigh single handedly. A PC game about Conehead is an entirely different experience, and honestly could be called something entirely different in some cases. Actually, think about it, I'm pretty sure some PC like games actually don't have a Conehead equivalent. Huh. Maybe one day I should actually play some of these. Shockingly enough, I haven't played a lot of them, but it could be neat to do someday. Maybe a stream? I don't know. Speaking of streams, I actually plan to start streaming again soon, so feel free to prop by. Prop... Pop by? I stream on YouTube, so just being subscribed, I would wink here if my face existed, would let you see them when I show up again, because that's pleasant. 
Anyways, I already said to subscribe, so yeah. I should probably just close it off. Whatever. This has been Creeps, and have a good one.